Hello viewers, this is second part of lecture number 13. In the second part, I'm going to explain MATLAB code for a method called L2 method that is used to approximate the Caputo fractional derivative. Before I present the explanation for the MATLAB code, I'm going to present derivation for the L2 method. Let me also tell you the derivation I have already presented in the first part of lecture number 13 for the L2 method. In this lecture, there is an alternative way to drive the L2 method. So as we know that the left Caputo fractional derivative is defined by this equation 1. Let's replace x by xn in equation 1. If we do so, we will have equation number 2. Now we have an interval from 0 to 2 and we are going to make a partition on this interval. So you can see over here that the lower limit is x0 which is equal to 0 and this final point is xn which is equal to capital T. So we have total n plus 1 grid points. Moreover, this small h stands for the constant time step size. Now in equation 2, we had an interval from 0 to xn. I have broken that interval into several intervals as you can see from 0 to x1, then from x1 to x2 and so on and so forth. We will have equation number 3. After that, I have written equation 3 in the compact form using this summation notation. Where you can see if you substitute the index k is equal to 1 in the lower limit, you will have x0. And then if you put the 1 in the upper limit, you will have x1. So you will have the first term in equation number 3. In this way, you can obtain all the terms that are being appeared in equation 3. So, equation 3 can easily be written in the form of equation 2, equation 4. Now, in equation 4, you can also notice that we have a term for the second order derivative. So, I have approximated this term, the second order derivative, by three point central difference formula that we are already familiar with from our knowledge from the uh, from our knowledge of the classical numerical analysis. So you can see that from equation 4, now we have equation number 5, where the second derivative has been replaced by this highlighted term, which is what we call the three-point central difference formula. So we have this equation 5. Equation 5 is equivalent to equation 6 because I have moved this fraction Move this fraction to the outside of the integral and now we have equation number 6 in which we can easily integrate the term with xn minus s whole power 1 minus alpha. So this term can easily be integrated with the help of power rule and if we do so we will have equation number 7. You can see that the constant in the denominator can be moved to the outside. And then I have used the fundamental rule of calculus, that is the upper limit xk has been substituted for s and then minus sign the lower limit xk minus 1 has been substituted for s over here. So we will have equation number 8. After that we have relations like xn is equal to x0 plus nh. I haven't written here x0 because that is equal to 0. So xn is equal to nh xk minus 1 is equal to k minus 1 times h and xk is equal to kh. So use these relations for equation number 8 and if we do so, we will have equation number 9. Here you can see that the minus sign is missing because I have moved it inside. Moreover, you can see in the term that these two terms, the second term and the first one, they have h power 2 minus alpha common. So I have taken it outside of the summation sign and we will have equation number 10. 
wherein I have also used one of the properties of the gamma function as you can see highlighted with the red color. After that, you can see h square h square term can be cancelled and you will have h power minus alpha and the rest of the terms are same. So, we have reached at equation number 11. So, finally, L2 method has been obtained to approximate the Caputo fractional derivative. So, this is the final method denoted by equation number 12. So, this is the method what we call the L2 method to approximate the Caputo fractional derivative. Now, I will present the MATLAB code for the method given in equation number 12. So, let's go to MATLAB M file to see that how a MATLAB code can be designed. So, now starting from line number 14, as you know, these are some of the necessary commands that we must give. After that, you can see on line number 21, we have h is equal to 0 0.1, which is what we call a step size. After that, x of 1 is 0, that is the initial value for x. The last value is 1. And then we have an interval from x1 to x last with the step size h on line number 33. Then on line number 37, we have number of steps defined by the formula seal x last minus the initial whole divided by number of uh, whole divided by step size. Then I have taken here the fractional order 1.5 and then the function that is being differentiated taken by me is sin x. Now the algorithm starts. So you can see on line number 52, this was a constant if, and if you go back to the slide, you can see that h power minus alpha divided by gamma of 3 minus alpha, this is a constant that is being with the scheme. So, it is in front of the scheme, it's a coefficient. So, I have assigned it a name, capital A on line number 52. After that, you can see that we have on line number 56, k starts from 2 and ends at n. Now, you might be wondering that in the scheme, k was starting from 1 and ends at h, ends at n. So, now here, in equation number 12, if you substitute, look at this last term, last function value over here, focus on this expression. Now, MATLAB, in MATLAB, if you start k from 1, then what happens, you will have x of 0 over here. And the MATLAB won't be able to recognize that what is x of 0. By hand, we write x of 0 because we know that x of 0 means the initial value of x. But MATLAB does not recognize in this way. So, MATLAB recognize if we write x of 1. So, this is the reason that I have started the value of k from 2 in MATLAB. I hope you uh, understand this point. So, let's go to M file again. And now on line number 59, this is what you see on line number 59. This is written as it is, it was given in the slide. So, if you compare, look at this, this capital A was the coefficient, a constant. Then you had the summation sign. Okay, so some built-in function of the MATLAB has been used. And now look at this n minus k plus 1 whole power to minus alpha and this is what you have on the slide as well n minus k plus 1 whole power to minus alpha then in the code we should have minus n minus k whole power to minus alpha and yes this is what you can see over here something that i am highlighting after that you can tell you the functional values the function x of k plus 1 minus 2 times functions value at k and then at k minus 1. And this is what we have over here. The functions value at k plus 1, at k and at k minus 1. So, this is what is written by hand on the slide exactly the same way we have typed in the MATLAB M file. So, this is the algorithm you have to write. And after that, of course, it will give us the approximate value. So, I would like to see 
that how much error it contains in order to see that I will have to compare the answer with the exact solution. So remember that the function that I had chosen was sin x and the, and the order, fractional order was 1.5. So at 1 we are going to check what is the final solution. So you can see here on line number 71 that the exact solution for the function sin x with the fractional order 1.5 is the one I have now highlighted. And in this solution, you can see we have fresnel sine function, which is one of the special functions in fractional calculus. And then we have fresnel cosine function as well. So now the question arises, how I have obtained the exact solution for the function sine when the fractional order is 1.5. So there are many ways to get the exact solution for the sine function, but the easiest one is to use a symbolic uh, software that is MAPL. I have used the MAPL here, so I have now opened the MAPL sheet and now I'm going to write down here that the value of alpha I have as 3 upon 2, that is 1.5 and then MATLAB, uh, MAPL has a built-in command with the name fractdiff and then you can type the function whose derivative is required with respect to x and now the fractional order that you have chosen as 3 by 2. So now run this maple sheet and it will give you the exact solution if it has. And yes, it has the exact solution. It has the exact solution and you can see that the exact solution contains fractional sine and fractional cosine functions. So what I have done, I have simply copied this equation and then I have passed it to the MATLAB M file and this is how I have obtained the exact solution for the sine function. It is the 3 upon second derivative for the sine function. Okay, so now after that on line number 75 you can see that I have computed the absolute error. So this is the difference between exact and the approximate answer. After that I have tried to display the results and Finally, on line number 86, the first column will give us how many steps have been taken. The second column, step size, exact value, the approximate value, and in the final column, I will see the absolute error. Fine, so this is all about the code. Now, let's run this code to check the result. So, I have run the script and now I'm going to the command window and now you can see that the 10 steps have been taken with the step size 0 0.1 this is the exact solution and then you have uh, the approximate solution with the absolute error 4.7820 10 to the power minus 2 right so now I'm going back to the code and then I'm going to comment this line number 14 and now I decrease the step size. Also, I comment this line because now already I know that what are the what are the what are what is going to be displayed on the command window. So let's run the code over here with the step size 0 0.01. Okay, so now the code has been run. I'm going to decrease the step size to 0 0.01 and the run, run the code again. So decrease the step size to 0 0.001 and I'm going to run the code again. Finally 0 0.4 times 0 0.01 and run the code again. Now I'm going to the command window to check what are the results. So you can see that the error behaves in a monotonically, uh, it is actually showing the mon monotonically decreasing behavior. So the errors are decreasing and you can also compare the exact answer with the approximate answer. You can see that over here there was a little bit difference. However, when you compare the answer over here, if you compare the answer in the last row, then you can see that almost four digits after the decimal point are being meshed and the errors once again are decreasing. So this is how you can design MATLAB code. 
It's very simple MATLAB code for the L2 method, which is a numerical method used for the approximation of the Caputo fractional derivative. I hope you have uh, understood the lecture. Even though if you have any question, any queries, so you are welcomed to write your comments, to write your questions in the comment box. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.